you are being recorded, gentlemen. Uh, okay, good evening. Uh, call this meeting, a special meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, Subcommittee on Subdivision Regulation Rewrite to order. Uh, it is 7.01 p.m. We are meeting via Zoom. Uh, uh, do I usually do a roll call of these? I guess I do. Uh, I, I, I can't remember if we do them typically yeah, in the yeah, subdivisions yeah, or not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Lenke, Mr. Hill, and Joseph Brody Brown are present. Um, and our agenda item, our next agenda item is discussion of the subdivision regulations. Uh, oh, Santos just texted. Joe, can you text him back since I'm. Um, Will do. Yeah. Tell him, tell him we would love him to join if he can. In the meantime, I'm going to share. I'm just the waiting page. to hear Google. Yeah, if there's no motions or votes, the quorum, strictly speaking, isn't necessary, but it certainly is nice to have one. Um, uh, and I'm going to bring us to this. Just, uh, Reba, are you breaking up? Who is I am? I got, I've got you, Tira. Um, what were you saying, John? I was just going to say, you really, you really don't have to have a, a, a major quorum. If you've got three people and you feel it's sufficient enough to go continue at, in a subcommittee, okay? It's because right. it's not really from a couple of my experiences already. So uh, Tira knows all about that. <laughs> uh, here we go. Here we are. Section three. Section three? Article uh, four, section yeah. three. Uh, page 22 in the current regulations. Okay, now that you said page 22, I love that. Do what I can. Uh, I'm going to try to neaten up the um, review window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't need this. And we don't need this. That's a lot easier. That That's just shows the comments. Fun. Oh, yeah, that was driving me nuts. Even looking at it, trying to drop new comments in was making me crazy. <laughs> uh, okay. Section three, design and construction standards, letter A, design. Subdivisions shall be designed with consideration of the guidance of the current plan of conservation and development adopted by the commission for the town and lands around the subdivision, particularly in regard to streets, drainage, and reservation of land for open space. Proposed subdivisions and all street drainage and other improvements required by these regulations shall also be designed and constructed in accordance with the Town of Thompson Road Ordinance and other applicable ordinances and regulations of the Town of Thompson. Uh, and the marginal comments here we have a couple, looks like these are both from me. Uh, well, yeah, one the, of the notes the to myself really, ask one of the local engineering firms uh, that designs a lot of subdivisions to suggest an order of action for these items that flows logically. And I, it looks like I already made the other corrections. So yeah, uh, unless good. somebody has something on that, I think we can scroll forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, B, supervision and inspection. Construction of all required improvements shall be carried out to the specifications and under the supervision of the Director of Public Works. That is a correction I already made. The title is incorrect. Mm -hmm. Who shall be authorized to take materials, samples, cores, and tests as deemed necessary to determine compliance with these regulations. Capitalize. The commission may require the applicant at the applicant's expense to have such tests made and certified by a professional engineer licensed to practice in the state of Connecticut. In addition, the commission or its appointed representative shall have free access to the construction work at all times. 
seems fairly uncontroversial. Anybody have any other comments? No. Okay. Moving forward, give me give me a second to turn my ceiling fan on in this office. It's I'm turning into my father. I keep saying it's like an oven in here. That is going to be on my father's tombstone, but I'm getting right behind him. <laughs> uh, oh, Cindy just came in. Letter C, building lots. Proposed building lots shall be of such shape, size, location, and topography. Uh, I'm suggesting striking and character uh, for a number of reasons, which we can discuss that the buildings can be constructed reasonably and so that they can be occupied and used for building purposes without danger to the health and safety of the occupants and the public. Any lot which is found to be unsuitable for occupancy and building by reason of water or flooding conditions, unsuitable soil, topography, ledge, ledge rock, shallow depth to bedrock or other conditions shall be combined with another lot or lots that are suitable which may result in a reduction of the total number of lots or shall be marked, this is not an approved lot on a subdivision map. No lot so designated by the commission shall be considered for approval until a grading plan meeting the requirements of Article 4, Section 4E. I haven't checked to see whether that is uh, a meaningful section, has been submitted. Proposed building lots shall be designed and arranged to make best use of the natural terrain, avoiding unnecessary regrading, and to preserve substantial trees, woods, and inland wetlands. So I suggested striking in character for two reasons. One is that I don't actually think it means anything there. Uh, I mean, a building lot of character, that building, I mean, what does that even mean? Uh, also, there's a big movement uh, at the state level to strike the term character from zoning in general because of the way it is frequently used uh, as a subjective way of excluding people from doing things with their properties. And I would suggest that that uh, logic is sound. Therefore, we should follow in kind. It may actually end up being a state requirement anyway to strike that. Um, and then my other observation, which is a question to the commission is, is there a reason to include the option of marking something as a, not an approved lot rather than having the applicant add it to another conforming lot. Discuss? Um, before we get to those two big topics, um, I actually think it should be Article 4, Section 4. Um, sorry, I just lost it. G, perhaps? Yeah, G. Section 4, or yeah, Section E. As, as currently written. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to highlight that so I know to go back and check it later. Because yeah. all those numbers are going to change. So I want right. to know which one it, it ends up being. Okay. Um, I had also uh, marked character um, before we got here. And for many of the reasons Tira had uh, indicated, I'm not sure what others' thoughts are on it. I don't hear anybody jumping up and down to defend the term, so I'm happy to, to strike it and move on to the next comment. Mm, and yeah. that is a question. That's a good observation. <laughs> uh, and so your next question was, when would there be any reason to not add an unapproved lot to another lot? Yeah. Is that a fair summary? Yeah, I think so. I mean, well, it does say in there, uh, it does say in there that it can be combined to create, a, you know, a, a lesser mm. number of lots or it shall be marked as not an approved. But what is even the point of that? Why not just tack it on to an approved lot? Well, that would make sense. Yeah, what then happens? I mean, does someone buy that land? What then happens with that lot? Yeah, I guess if there is an option that should be suggested uh, may result in a reduction of the total number of lots, 
or shall be combined with required open space would be the only other thing that makes sense to me. Right. I don't know, Alvin, what do you think about that? <laughs> I like the idea of combining it with open space myself. I agree with Alvin on that. Yeah, I kind of, because that's that, that other option. Or shall be designated open space or, or something like that? Uh, or shall be. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that seems much more logical. Obviously, council's going to review everything at the end anyway. Maybe there is a legal reason, but I, it, it just doesn't seem to be a very functional choice. So it either gets combined with a lot or it gets permanently listed as open space. Yeah. I think you can probably now lose that on a subdivision map that follows that. So let's just read the sentence back to make sure it flows. Any lot which is found to be unsuitable for occupancy and building by reason of water or flooding conditions, unsuitable soil, topography, ledge rock, shallow depth to bedrock, or other conditions shall be combined with another lot or lots that are suitable, which may result in a reduction of total number of lots, or shall be designated as open space. Makes uh, sense. Yeah, I think so. And that should be a I semicolon. Yeah, I like it too. Okay, moving on. C1, lot size. Any lot proposed for residential development shall meet the requirements of the zoning regulations as a minimum size, except the commission may require larger lots if needed to provide adequate separation between and among the well septic system components, foundation, including footing, drains, or other mechanical means of drainage, and any other such features on any nearby lots, whether existing or possible in the future, and a reserve area for potential replacement of the leach field proposed for such lot, which which reserve area meets the requirements of lot size and that no portion of any septic system may be within 50 feet of any wetland soil drainage feature or in an area of shallow soil to bedrock water table or other potential interference with proper functioning of the septic system. Uh, and so the comments on the side, uh, just as a language construction, I would change this to uh, any lot proposed for residential development shall meet, shall meet the requirements of the minimum size for the district in which it is located. I think that's a clearer construction. Uh, and my other suggestion is actually to, and I can undo this if we don't like it, uh, except the commission may require larger lots, and I'm just going to cut it here, larger lots if needed, and then, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to redo this. Hold on. Sorry, guys, bear with me. do this quite right. The commission may is where I want this. Oops. They require larger lots or permit smaller lots for an approved conservation sub division. And then we'll deal with the rest of this gobbledygook later. So let's just move that away. That's how I think 
those cup first couple lines should be constructed and I'm just going to ellipse this to indicate that there would be more text here. Uh, let's see. And then we have a pair of comments from me and from David Held, which are in a similar vein, um, that the requirement to uh, have a larger lot for separation of septics, yada, 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 would be because of following NDDH recommendations and that that should be the that that reason should be plainly stated, right? That the commission isn't strictly speaking deciding what the separations are. It's following the NDDH guidelines. And right. then, right. And then David's comments take it even further, which are, um, oops, somebody's coming in. Um, similar to other comments that he's made, which is all this stuff that refers to uh, septic is the jurisdiction of the NDDH, so why put ourselves in the position of stating those requirements? Now, so far, so far, yeah. you guys have accepted that logic, and I also accept that logic. Do you continue yeah. to accept that logic? Alvin C has already said so. Yeah. Joe, you're nodding. Yeah, yeah. That, you know that take that takes that takes it out of our hands. We're just going to follow whatever they the NDDH says. I, that they're the they're the uh, uh, controlling authority. The arbiters. Correct. Yeah. So you know you know we, we we should not because that's state more or less. So let's leave it at that. I, I would. Okay, so let's do it this way, or see how you guys like this. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to. Hi, Brian. Hi. Hey, Brian. Hi there. Hi. Good evening. We're, we're, we're Good glad morning. that you're here. I hope it isn't causing you like major agita. No, I just don't know what time of day it is anymore. It, just, <laughs> it doesn't even matter anymore. Hey, uh, uh, Mr. Brian Santos, I had a, somebody give me a very interesting story about you playing golf with a. You had a. Um, Somebody when when Bobby was alive, you guys were playing some golf around the golf. I lost yeah. your last. Yeah. Yep, yep. Did some <laughs> did some playing of golf with uh, Mr. Mr. Bob DeRosia. Yep, my miss him already. Yo, you had some ringer. You were playing with Danny Santer and everything. Yeah. I was with Danny last night playing golf. I see. I okay, see. so how do you guys hey. like this construction? Now that I've finished typing it. Any lots, any lot proposed for residential development shall meet the requirements of the zoning regulations as a minimum, uh, shall meet the requirements of the minimum size. Hold on, bear with me. Try it again. Any lot proposed for residential development shall meet the requirements of the zoning regulations for the minimum size for the district in which it is located. Period. Oops. The commission may. Period. Yeah, period, period. Then the, and, the, and, or, and the commission may. The commission may. Also. Accept as the, except it should be accept as the commission may. Right. One more time. Any lot proposed for residential development shall meet the requirements of the zoning regulations for the minimum size for the district in which it is located, except as the commission may require larger lots to provide adequate separation between and among the well septic system components and foundation to meet the requirements of the NDDH or permit smaller lots for an approved conservation subdivision. Great. How do you guys feel about that? I like it. Calvin? Well, we're still dealing with NDDH. I'm not sure I like that. I mean, they're gonna um, spell that out anyway. Well, they need to know who, they're go who they have to go to. 
to get the approval. I mean, some people are new to the place and they say, who do I go to? So How about then, as directed by? That's better. I see. Does that seem correct? Yeah, that completely takes. Nope. Yeah, okay. I was I would rather say as required by N N D D H. But you could put, use both words, directed slash required by. Yeah, I, I, I like I think required is better than directed. I'm sure there are some who might object to the commission appearing to be directed by an outside body, even when it would be the case, huh. right? So that's just acknowledging the a requirement. Yeah. I think that satisfies the purpose and also doesn't get into a lot of unnecessary detail that isn't really what you're considering, right? Right. Okay. I love it when we get something done. Not, uh, not, not, to not to nitpick, and I am probably the last person in the room to uh, say something on grammar. Right no, after please. located, comma, except, do we really need the word as? Except the commission may? It says except as the commission may. Does that make sense? I believe except as the commission may is more correct in this case. Very good. What do you think, Mr. Linguist? So yeah, you know, when I saw it written, I wasn't wild about it, but when you read it, you convinced me. <laughs> Fair enough. Like I said, I'm the last person to talk about your but... Joe, Joe and I can duel our, our dueling linguistics. <laughs> <laughs> but I cede all of the uh, all of the Spanish to you, sir. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm good. Uh, okay, C2, frontage. Each lot shall have frontage on a public road except as otherwise allowed by these regulations. So, uh, where did we go? My comment here, adjust to accommodate for private ways shared drives, which I, I think is logical under the you know, assumption that we are putting them in there. So, is it as simple as Each lot okay. shall have is just adding those three things. Like acknowledge, I, acknowledging that the frontage may be through a shared driveway. Uh, a public or yep. private public road or private way. There are a few roads in town that where that where it's you know it's town road and everything, and, and there are some shared driveways even though they got the public frontage on both sides, you know, to the shared driveway for those houses. Uh, I'm just trying to think what makes sense here. Each lot shall have frontage on a public road or private way, except as otherwise allowed by these regulations for shared driveways now that makes sense to me but it does it make sense to you guys each lot shall have frontage on a public road or private way except as otherwise allowed by these regulations for shared driveways or interior lots that sounds that sounds pretty good to me but can anybody imagine any other instance that is not covered by those four examples? <clears throat> just, uh, just like the meeting the other night, that gentleman that's got that property, he would like to put those houses, like four or five houses in, and it's going to mm -hmm. be a shared, shared driving. So, you know, let's use that as an example. There's a good example that this. Yeah. Would, the, you, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. I can even I can even bring it up. So let me um, save where we are, and we'll just quickly flip over. While you're doing that, Tara, is there any way that 
saying public road or private way opens any unintended ramifications? Well, I guess my question would be like, what? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was just thinking the same thing, Joe. I, I can't think of any negative impact by saying that. Okay. Um, hold on, let me find. Give me I time. I this Give me time to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah was, well, was, and, and again, don't forget that, that we're going to have this reviewed by council. So, uh, right. so it is always possible that, um, you know, Attorney Roberts is going to come back and say, hey, you guys meant well, but this is just not right. Um, I mean, we haven't had a lot of those instances, but there have been a handful on technicalities, right? So... Well, the other the other um, issue too is that knowing that this is going to be a change, then I can be more observant when um, issues come into the office and see how they relate to this phrase in our uh, regulation, mm -hmm. and if there'd be any ramifications on what we're trying to do, or if there's any yep. examples that hey, this is not going to work for this, so let's rethink this. So, and we have time yeah, for that, right? Especially in the development period, right? Right. We, we can. So that's why I was so happy to have this the other day, which I said in the meeting, is that we can actually look at this in, as a quote unquote low density district example of a subdivision with shared drive. So Tira, so, I don't, Tira sorry. Uh, I'm not sure that's okay. the way you shared it, you were only sharing word, but if, if you, you're not sharing the plans with Yeah, we see a bunch of black screen. Oh, really? Okay, let me try, try it again. You got it now? Yeah. 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 Okay. There you go. Yeah. I think I just have to stop share in between when I flip from yeah. format to format. My, my only comment is when you say shared driveway or interior lot, it shouldn't be shared driveway for interior lots, such as what we're looking at on the screen right now. Well, either, that's a that shared would, driveway. Yeah, I know, but the word is or interior lots. It should be shared driveway for interior lots. And that's a, this is a perfect example of that. It's Except that not driveway. all interior lots do have shared drives. As they're currently configured, you can have an interior, a flag lot. Sure. Your flag lot would have a private separate drive, but would not, strictly speaking, have frontage. Yeah, that's. And we that, have language that gets around that. Yeah, my lot's a flag lot. Right. Okay. Unless we only want to have interior lots that share drives going forward, which would grandfather everybody else in. I don't happen to think that's necessary, but th that's what you guys are here to discuss. I, I won't say that I have strong feelings about that. Yeah, I understand what you what the intent of the word or is now. I, I, I got that. It's in either or. You can have a shared driveway for an interior lot or you can just have a shared driveway. Right. Yeah, technically anything on a shared drive becomes an interior lot, right? Except in as far as we've defined that it doesn't, or I've suggested that we define that it doesn't. But an interior lot does not necessarily have to share the drive. Yep. Okay. Got right. it. All right, let's oh, go grammar. back to the doc. Grandma. Oh, my God. So are we generally happy with this C2 then? I'll read it again. Each lot shall have frontage on a public road or private way, except as otherwise allowed by these regulations for shared driveways or interior lots. Good to me. Sounds good to okay. me. It's pretty straightforward. I'm good with that. I love straightforward. Uh, C3, lot numbers. When feasible, lots intended for separate ownership shall be numbered beginning with the number one and shall continue consecutively throughout the entire subdivision. Adjoining sections of the same subdivision having the same title shall not duplicate numbers. I'm not sure I know what this second sentence even means. 
Adjoining sections of the same subdivision having the same title shall not duplicate numbers. I think it's kind of mute because we're already saying that number it and it starts with one and then do that consecutively throughout the entire subdivision. Yeah. So if it had an adjoining section, it would just be a continuation of the same subdivision. So I feel like you can strike the second sentence unless I'm missing something. Uh, yeah, this sentence doesn't make an ounce of sense to me. Uh, it does any, is anybody deriving meaning from that? I, I feel like I remember subdivisions where there's been like one and one A, like, or A, I don't know, like different sets of numbers. Is that a re-subdivision, Joe, you're thinking of? I, no, I don't think maybe, but I don't think so. Like, I feel like, like, I don't know, have there been any big subdivisions that we've done in the past 10 years? Oh. No. Nothing bigger than Madison or Donovan, right? Yeah. Donovan's actually the biggest. Yeah, and I, I feel like, I wonder if maybe but that one had with, different numbering systems. But the thing with Donovan's, um, Joseph, is, is he's tying it back in he's creating a, a big horseshoe so you have some um houses that were already there previously for the last 45 years so how the numbers are stacked how the numbers started from which would be the right side and where the new side starts so you know that would be the same thing you're pre-existing so if you got one 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 through one through seven on the right and two to eight on the left, you gotta be consistent going down, you know, on the continuation of the road, all the way back to the, onto the new section. I'm, I'm gonna make something up for the second sec, second sentence there. Is this if, okay. they come, if, is this if someone comes back later, whatever, say 10 years later and says, all right, I'm gonna continue on with my subdivision. Right, and this is adjoining sections of the same subdivision having the same title because it will be the same project shall not duplicate numbers, meaning it would not start over with one, it would just continue on with whatever number they're on 51, 52, 53. I'm making that I, up I, as a rationale. Yeah, no, I, I, I see what you're saying, and I think it was maybe Joe said something about does that have to do with re subdivision, but honestly, what kind of an idiot would you have to be to start numbering your street numbers? with numbers you already had, hey, you know. I, which is not to say that there aren't idiots, but, uh, <laughs> you know, this isn't the street number. This is the lot number. Yeah. Lot numbers. Oh, that's number. true. That's true. Lot numbers. Yeah. And I agree and, with what I, I, you know, I agree. It, it, it could be the re, re subdivision. Well, I I'd said it's probably related to the re subdivision. Yeah, that's a good observation. We're all thinking street numbers, I think, when it is, in fact, lot numbers. So I would uh, just remove the word adjoining sections, say, re-subdivisions of the same subject, having the same title, should not duplicate numbers. Yeah, that's good, Brian. Uh, let's see. Re-subdivisions having the same, I guess, subdivision. Of re-subdivisions of the subdivision. That's re-subdivisions having the same yeah, okay. title. Yep. So not duplicate. Shall numbers. not duplicate numbers. Shall yeah. not duplicate. I feel like that's clear. Lot numbers. That's Probably assuming that. that that's what that was actually meant to. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, again, and I'm none of us really know, but it, at least it may, ha, has some logic behind it now so we'll stick with that for now it'll go into the the v1 draft and then we might change it again later uh c4 lot lines and shapes insofar as practical the side lot lines of all lots shall be at right angles to the street on which the lot faces or shall be radial to the street line it shall be the discretion of the commission to refuse to permit town boundary lines to cross any lot and in the event of such refusal, such boundary lines shall be made to constitute 
Oh, that's terrible. Such boundary lines <laughs> shall be made to constitute one of the boundary lines. I know what they're trying to say, but that's just such sloppy language. All right. So my comment that I dropped in here um, was, is this genuinely necessary? What is the purpose of requiring squared off lots? I'm always very leery of squared off lots in New England. <laughs> I'm all for now, squared off in road. The- Go ahead, Alvin. No, I mean, why are we getting involved with shapes? Yeah, I, I kind of yeah. agree. Like there's I mean, a good solid to the reason design. to have, yeah, there's a good solid reason to have right, right angles at street intersections. It forces somebody to actually slow down and stop at the intersection. But who cares if a lot is irregularly shaped? That's got to be based on the shape of the parcel that you've got, right? Pretty much. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have strong feelings about keeping this? Because I'm inclined to strike the whole thing. Um, I personally I'd rather see it gets zipped out. I, I don't. I don't have it. I don't. I don't care either way. I. Um... All right. So let me. This one definitely. I think. Because it comes down to for the lots of lines and shapes and everything. That's that really comes down to the. Uh, to the, um, no, I just pulled a senior citizen moment. The person that's going to build all the lots, the right. civil engineer, right? The engineer you, you, yeah, and the builder. And the engineer. So let, you know, let that, that's on them how the lots come out on size or whatever, long as it meets the requirements uh, of. Um, yeah, usually it's like, oh, okay. Usually they're always like, okay, you need 50 foot for a driveway and they, they square it off and make it parallel. They're yeah. not like making one go right and then the other one go left or whatever they're doing. Yeah. Right? Um, I think that's something I think we should just stay away from. Just let it be as long as it's it's done by yeah. a certified engineer and, 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 and whatnot. Well, let, me ask a, let me ask a different question. Cindy or Alvin and everyone else has been on this for a long, longer than I have. Have we ever had a lot line issue like they're talking about here, like a shape issue that this had to be brought up? Not that I know of, Brian. Not that I know of. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I, I feel like if that's the case, then strike it. I uh, Clearly, people are laying out things properly. Yeah, and I can call to mind several highly irregularly shaped parcels mm-hmm. yeah. where carving out right angle lots could in fact be prohibitively difficult to 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 subdivide i would like to have something in here to say and maybe that's why you're leaving the second portion of this is well i think they're two separate things but yeah yeah. if, if something does become so irregular that we don't like it for whatever reason and i don't know what that reason is at this particular time that we have the right to refuse it and say you, you need to lay that out differently. It's like but what would that? What well, could that be? I, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, it's it's like anything else. What we do, what we're doing here is we're just trying to simplify everything. But you never know what somebody's going to come out of the woodwork with something and throw it at us. And then, well, we'll just have to make a decision, like Brian says. Yeah, like what possible negative consequences could an irregular lot cause? That's not a rhetorical uh, question. That's an Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll give you, a, I'll give you <laughs> an answer that may not be an answer, but uh, if it's an irregular lot and it happens to be my neighbor, they might be taking up property on my side to make my lot even more irregular that it's not like something that I would want, right? It's making a, a property next door not valuable, right? I, I don't know. Again, I'm totally making that up. And usually these things are already established, but, and we're talking about, I think clearly we're talking about. Yeah, something. but it doesn't, but them doing that doesn't change the dimensions anything. of your lot. Your, your lot has surveyed dimensions that belong to you regardless. Yeah. And I, I'm now, as I'm talking out loud here, I'm also thinking this is a subdivision regulation. And that person that's making these lines would not want to create a piece of property that's not valuable. 
right? So, yeah, I think we could probably strike this. Yeah. <laughs> talking this through here. Well, that's why we do this, right? So then the second sentence I do think is different. Um, whether it needs to be included or not, I just think needs to be considered separately. It shall be the discretion of the commission to refuse to permit town boundary lines to cross any lot. And in the event of such refusal, such town boundary line shall be made to constitute one of the lot boundary lines. I added those two words to clarify. Uh, Cindy, correct me if I'm wrong. There are a couple of instances near the mass border where there are lots that cross, are there not? You're on mute, Cindy. Okay, so what did you ask again? I apologize. So what did you ask? So we're looking at the sent second sentence in, in item C4. Uh, it shall be at the discretion of the commission to refuse to permit town boundary lines to cross any lot. And in the event of such refusal, such town boundary lines shall be made to constitute one of the lot boundary lines. My question is, we do indeed have some parcels on both the mass line, and now that I think of it, also down on the Woodstock line, don't we? That yes, we do, do in fact cross. Yes, yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got one here in Cornerbog. Two of them actually. I think. Yeah. So I guess the question that is raised by those facts are: Is it the will of the commission that those existing? parcels are just existing non-conforming and nobody can ever do it again? Uh, or is this sent sentence also not helpful and should be struck? And I have, I have no opinion on the subject. I'm just stating that I am aware that there are some exceptions to it already. Do they cause significant inconvenience, problems for the municipality, particularly the ones crossing state lines, I would think. That's got to be weird. State line, well, what happened is, is it depends on what what side of the state line the living quarters, which would be your bedroom, is. that's the town you're supposed to be paying your taxes to, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Do you pay taxes on the about property that's that. not in the town? You, are we saying that the house is like down the middle? Usually it's just the piece yeah. of property that goes over the... the uh, no, the, this one here is the property and the house is divided right on the town. <laughs> on the state line and everything. And it's been like that since I can remember. Since I was a kid. Here's, here's an interesting point. Um, later on in the same section, in section I... We say it again, lot lines shall be laid out so as not to cross town boundary lines. So <laughs> is, that, is that important <laughs> so that they want to say it twice? <laughs> right. Do you, do you want to do you want to just uh, punt on this and <laughs> take it out here and deal with it later? I don't know. <laughs> it wouldn't make sense to take it out. Why repeat twice? Then what? Well, we're not going to put it in twice, right? That's for sure. Right. So, so the first question is, do we want to keep it? The second question is, if where? we keep it, where does it belong? I mean, this is what? This is for... Building lots. Building lots. So it does make some sense that it would yeah. be in this section if it's something that you're retaining. Yeah, I, I would keep it here. I, I like the word discretion. It's our discretion. If yeah, if you have a if you're trying to do a subdivision right up against whatever Massachusetts and you got this one piece of property, we have the right to say, no, you're gonna use the border of Webster or whatever town it is. That's your that's your lot line. Right. And you have to stop right there. The bound the boundary line of the town. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here's here's the like now that we're talking about this like this and I agree with you Brian I think that's good. Um, now, I'll remind the commission as well that Rhode Island line we have property too that butts the state of Rhode Island yeah, and that you. line last hundred and fifty some odd years is still debatable. <laughs> <laughs> that that's not awesome. south line I think there's several degrees that no one seems to it's almost like. La La Land between. Go buy one it. State. Yep. Go buy it. Alvin. 
so here, yeah, so Cla here, just here claim it, it by adverse possession. Here it was discretion, right? Yeah. But when it is mentioned again, it's shall. So it's required language. Lot lines shall be laid out so as not to cross town boundary lines. I can't imagine a good engineer crossing a state line or of any state yeah. line. You yeah. can't see it. Well, it's, I mean, how much of is it up to the engineer? If it's one contiguous parcel that for some reason is across two state lines or two town lines, I mean, the engineer didn't create the master parcel. It exists that way for whatever right. reason, probably because it pre-exists zoning. So what happens in those? That's, yeah, I, I'm based on, I mean, because that's the only way that's going to happen, right? Is something that pre-exists zoning. Right. Right? Yeah, exactly. But nonetheless, is still a lot of record like for whatever reason. Yeah. So let's try this. Let's do this. Oops. The commission may. Or do we want to strike it in general as uh, I think Alvin just. Yeah, I think keep it like this for now. Okay. I mean, we're going to discuss everything again after there's a fully rewritten draft, so we can always come back and change our minds. Uh, no comments on lot grading. Well, we'll read it anyway. We're already here. Uh, C5, lot grading. Lots shall be graded to prevent ponding of water on the lot after construction of streets, drainage, and buildings are completed. Where filling of lots for final grading is required, compactable fill and topsoil as required for lawn or plant growth shall be used. Tree stumps, logs, or other decomposable material or building debris shall not be used as fill material. When rocks or boulders are used for fill, they shall be located only in areas of the lot where they shall not adversely affect foundation, septic systems, drainage facilities, or underground utilities, and shall be so deposited that in the opinion of the commission or it's, it's yeah. <laughs> you are a collective he now. It's designated representative. Voids likely to cause undue declivity will not be created. Seems reasonable. Construction guys. Sounds good yeah. to me. Okay. I love things that we can just agree on and move on. Uh, C6, interior lots. I'll bet you we have a lot to go over here. Uh, interior lots shall be of a minimum size of one and one half times as large as that required by the zoning regulations and shall meet the requirements listed in paragraphs two through five above. Interior lots shall A, only be used for single family dwellings and accessory buildings and uses permitted in a residential zone. Uh, B, the maximum number of interior lots shall not exceed one third of the total number of lots in any subdivision. C, the lot line or lines nearest the street to which the lot has access and most nearly parallel thereto shall be considered the street line for the purpose of establishing the building line. D, no interior lot shall be located to the rear of another interior lot. We have a lot of comments on the sidebar. I'll go through them one by one and then we can discuss. A uh, comment from Dave Held. Typical requirement in other towns is just to exclude the area of the access strip from the, inter from the lot area for regulatory purposes. There's no practical reason to make interior lots any bigger. I would concur with that logic. Uh, co comment number two. This needs to be aligned to the zoning regulations question. And I posed this in the... Um, zoning regulations review as well. Does adding the stipulation for the purposes of these regulations, lots arranged along a shared driveway or along shared driveways shall not, no, a shared driveway shall not be considered interior lots, resolve the logical conflict between permitting shared drives and the limiting of interior lots. Oh, look, Dave agrees with me. Thanks, Dave. Uh, comment in terms of what is permitted 
Duplexes, accessory apartments, and ADUs are permitted residential uses in all districts. Recommend adjusting this language accordingly. Uh, comment on the same item from Dave Held. Uh, why limit the use allowed by the underlying zone just because it's an interior lot? This makes no sense. Anyway, as you can have a subdivision of commercial or industrial land, then what? Uh, and the one-third limit, why have a limit on the number of interior lots, particularly if the suggestion above is implemented? And what is this a comment to? That's a comment to that. Okay. So those are the comments, all the comments on item C6. Um, so let's go one by one. Interior lots shall be of a minimum size of one and one half times as large as that required by the zoning regulations. I agree that that is yeah, why would a we poor do that? choice. Is that even practical the way the regulations are written now? Um, well, reading between the lines on Dave Held's comment, the suggestion is that one and one half times is accommodating for the access for the right of way. Mm -hmm. um, I like this suggestion better, uh, which would change this to read. And if we don't like this, uh, let's try this. Interior lots shall have the same minimum lot size required in the underlying district. The access right of way is not, shall not be included. In the calculation of the lot size. How does that sound? Interior lots shall have the same minimum lot size required in the underlying district and shall meet the requirements listed in paragraphs two through five above. The access right of way shall not be included in the calculation of the lot size for an interior lot. Makes sense to me. Yeah, I'm good with that. Does that seem favorable, Alvin, yep. John? No, I like that. Yeah, makes okay. sense. All right, so now let's move on to these various uses. A, uh, interior lots shall only be used for single family dwellings and accessory buildings. And Sorry, hold up permitted here. In a we, Sorry, do we want to add that um, that language that for the purposes of these regulations? In your uh, this is actually a suggestion for the zoning regulations. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Um, although it might be prudent to also reiterate that here. It, I'm not a big fan of repeating material, but uh, I think it is clarifying in this case. Yeah. I what do you guys think? I That's think it's talking weird. about shared driveways. Well, it accommodates for shared drives. Yeah. So let's try this. I think whereas this section is specifically in, like, entitled interior lots. I, I like this. I, I think this is appropriate to add it here. Where would you um, add it, Tira, in the zoning rights? Uh, currently, interior lots are addressed in general provisions. And I think the only thing it says is that there shall be no more than one. <laughs> and that what we discovered after we adopted that was that it was contradictory with allowing shared drives. So in other words, if you have a, if you have a situation like where Santos lives, 
right? He has a flag lot behind a lot. Nobody can come and build another lot behind him with a non-shared drive. Mm-hmm. But if a subdivision were to come in on a, you know, a currently, well, like the Napic one, right? That, that all of those lots would be right now considered illegal interior lots unless we say that for the purposes of these regulations, they are not interior lots. They're just lots with a shared drive yeah. or a private road. I mean, the private road kind of takes that away but if he doesn't constitute it as a road he constitutes it as a drive and um, you know that's mm-hmm. getting into splitting hairs but yeah that was one of my questions sorry i'm sorry if i'm just asking a dumb question here is private ways considered interior lots i would say no because a private road well we have to decide that i think later um Okay. That, well, no, we said private up. way gave frontage, right, up there earlier. Yeah, I think I think that's what we said earlier. Was that's frontage. right. That's right. They do give frontage, so therefore, okay. no. So the answer is no. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Good catch, Joe. Uh, okay. We we good with the. Yeah, I think this is I, appropriate I, to add it here, and I'm with you. I don't like duplicating things, but I feel like this. E- you have to say something about shared lots or a shared driveway is not considered an interior lot. I think that's yeah. Then it doesn't send somebody skittering around wondering where it's defined. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Okay. Interior lots shall a only be used for single family dwellings and accessory buildings and uses permitted in a residential zone. Um, so as I point out here, we already allow more than those uses in a residential zone. So, can we strike I this? Kinda, I think we should strike. Yeah, I agree. Anybody else here? No, take it out. Why are you taking it out? Well, because it's there. There are uses that are permitted in a district, in a zone, yeah. in a district. Right. So presumably, any lot that fits the requirements of the district can be used for the use, right? Yeah, I, I don't know what it hurts to leave that in so that they, when they're going through the subdivision regulations, they know that they can yeah, build so we, according to that district. Yeah, so it's like one of these things like, okay, you make a subdivision and this is saying, all right, you can only have single family dwellings and accessory buildings that are associated to that dwelling. So if somebody creates a subdivision, if we strike this, they could have a single family and right next door it could be a multifamily. Next door to that is another multifamily. Is well, if it's permitted in the district, right? I, I would. So what? Ahead. So what? This yeah, I don't know if I'm in favor of striking it now because I feel like if you're going to have okay. a subdivision, it should be single family homes and whatever accessory structures they want. Uh, I, I feel like we'll we'll get a mismatch of all kinds of different things if we allow multifamilies to be in other subdivisions even though they're allowed in the district but if they're creating a 50 person sub 50 house subdivision i at least want it to be consistent of single family homes so how about a compromise which is that an interior lot can only be used for uses essentially that are a simple zoning permit use so let's quickly or somebody who's got uh, the, the actual regulations book in front of them. Okay, give me a district, Tira. RRAD. Okay. Let me find, uh, okay. What can you do with a, with a simple zoning permit in the RRAD? Agriculture, farm stands, home occupations, single family dwellings, two family dwellings, accessory apartments, accessory dwelling units. Yes, yeah, the two person yeah a duplex so yeah. if somebody if somebody wanted to take instead of just putting in the single family dwellings in, in, in on a where he could put 50 houses and he wants to put up put in 25 duplexes long yeah, as they're sure. all they're mm-hmm. like brian said long as you're consistent in what you're doing not a single family then a duplex or whatever you know two-story uh 
department but, or something along it's being consistent. But you know, why can't it? Uh, so, just so the way I'm dynamical. reading this, right, you can have duplexes on all the lots with frontage. It's just the interior lots that you can't have. Why not? Why, why does it matter that it's an interior lot and not a frontage lot? Why do we, like, I don't, I, I yeah. don't understand. Wait, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, you can I still don't have understand. a mix match in a subdivision because there's no limitation on the frontage lot uses. Yeah, we, yeah. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll also lot. point out that in uh, just to use the example of a neighborhood, which is not a subdivision, but is a neighborhood, um, such as uh, you know the Main Street area of North Grosvenor Dale, you have duplexes or you theoretically have, well, there's a few, duplexes next to, or even triplexes next to single family homes. Uh, that's not disruptive of the character, right? Anything that you would be allowing on a simple zoning permit in the district, presumably you've already said this, these uses are allowed. Um, yeah. You know, and, like, and using using the example of the largest thing I could imagine going on an interior lot, what would be the problem of, say, a subdivision? Let's say let's say Fran Napick's acreage was um, actually being used for an equestrian farm. He keeps horses, right? Let's so that's an agricultural use, which would be well interior. Right. So where's the so why would you limit somebody from having the large interior lot, like maybe somebody who's subdividing their own property with the smaller lots out front? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm willing to to hear any arguments here. I'm, I'm just, you know, making the case as I see it. Um, but my feeling is, is that you have, you have the districts and the districts have uses. And this is getting proposed, remember, as a subdivision all at once, right? So yep. the developer is going to come in with an idea and a plan from go. So what would be the, the impetus for limiting what goes in an interior lot? I think it's what Brian suggested that it creates a, a patchwork. Um, so it it just depends well, on if you think a patchwork is uh, is equivalent to negative, or if a patchwork is just organic development. But it doesn't prevent a patchwork because you could have a patchwork of uses with yeah. any of the lots that have. It could be right next door. It could be a shared driveway, and it could be all kinds of different things. It could be. Uh, you know, private way that has all kinds of different things. Uh, I, I understand Joe's point. That we're talking about an interior lot. Why, why, we, why are we limiting just people? the interior lot, not everybody else, right? Yeah. Why interior lots specifically? Yeah, I, and I don't have a. I don't have any. Well, uh, the point of that is 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 to say that this interior lot can only be used for what's allowed in that district. But that's true of all the lots. The lot can only be used for what's allowed in the district period. I, I, I agree with that, but you might have a creative a creative developer that comes in and says, well, I'm going to put all these houses in front, but in the back, I'm going to put whatever that doesn't go with the houses. So, But it still has to fit in the district. Yeah. I, 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 I hear you. I, I just, yeah. so, some things yeah, just have to be written out so people understand them, even if you're duplicating. But I don't understand what this does. What was that? I, I don't understand what this does. I it don't just, understand it what just makes reconfirms the, what's in the zoning regulation. But it doesn't, Cindy. It it puts additional restrictions on interior lots that yeah, don't exist on lots that have frontage, and that's it's, what I don't understand. Yeah, I, I feel like if it if it said just following the character of the surrounding. I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> All right. He's yeah. bringing sexy back too, but don't I'm, tell Justin I'm, Timberlake. Oh, no, no, those, day, those days are done. I'm no longer sexy. Um, 
right. I, I just totally don't know what it hurts to to make that statement. Well, okay. I'll say it again for <laughs> Joe. It, is it putting an additional requirement or restriction on a district that's already established in the zoning regulations? You're you're saying now, oh, and oh, and by the way, interior lots can only have a single family dwelling, which is going let, to guess let me change. The district. Let me change the point a little bit because Dave Held makes it here. Um, why limit the use of that? Blah, blah, blah. This makes no sense. As you can have a subdivision of commercial or industrial land, right? So if so, right now the way this is constructed, if you're proposing a commercial subdivision, right, something that has multiple business uses lotted out, and it follows all the other. Uh, it says only can be used for single family dwellings and accessory buildings and uses permitted in a residential zone. You're, you're creating a conflict. Yeah. What, do you ha is there a separate section in your subdivision regulation that, that there is not the cr criteria? It's just for the subdivision. Yeah, it's just the subdivision of land. What is true about the way all of these subdivision regulations are worded is that there is an underlying assumption that those subdivisions are residential. But that underlying assumption is fundamentally flawed because the subdivision regulations just govern the subdivision of land, regardless of the use. The zoning regulations govern your uses. The subdivision regulations govern how you create parcels of land for those uses. Okay, whatever. Well, that's, I mean, it's not whatever, it's, it's important, but I, like I said, I just don't understand what makes interior lots different for in terms of use. Okay, so, so um, and of course, I don't think anybody's going to be doing the research on it, but why was it put in there in the first place? I, and we can say that about all things that we're taking out that we don't know why it was in there. So well, I, I don't think that the, the original zoning regulations provided the guidance to which gave those restrictions. So they probably added this line here. Okay. I mean, I would just say, and, and you're right, Cindy, we can't verify this because the people who did this can't answer us anymore, right? right? I, I would say that as you read these, the underlying assumption does appear to be that all subdivisions are residential subdivisions, but that's just, it's not the case. You can subdivide yep. land yep. for many, many uses. Exactly, yep. There's only two people that still, that actually are on this commission that could answer that question that we're on, would had something to do with these regs and sub subdivisions. I assume that's John and Randy. Uh, three, Bob. Uh, I think Robert Words too, but uh, but but yeah. John Rice and, and Randy Blackman would are the pretty much the original too. They've been pretty much on this commission since it was established in 1974. I was four years old. I, I please, I'm not answering that. Yeah, I'm not playing that game. I was running around <laughs> looking after three rug rats. I wasn't even going there with that. I was just, <laughs> two people I know of. All right, strike A. Strike yeah, A. Yeah, I'm with Brian. John, Alvin? Yes, yeah, strike it. Make it unanimous. Well, Alvin hasn't weighed in. He's sleeping. He's, I, I was wondering. <laughs> Oh, he's moving. What do you think, Alvin? Just leave it. Leave it? You say leave it in? Yeah. Okay. Reason? You, you want to have the additional requirement to say it has to be a single dwelling in interior lots? Okay. Oh boy, Joe, we got to, we got to, we got to vote now. Well, the thing, it, it, but it, well but no, also, we can, it, we can leave it in. Remember, this is good. This is a first draft. So, and we also only have four, right? So we'll, it just means we'll discuss it later, but what I yeah. will do is highlight it. And maybe uh, you can, can tell me why. Yeah. Up for further discussion. I look forward to that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay. B, the maximum number of interior lots shall not exceed one third of the total number of lots in any subdivision. We have a big question mark here from Dave, and I agree. Why limit the number of interior lots, particularly if we are accepting this? So let me get this right. Well, and the other thing, and the other thing is, um, we did establish, and I think the commission's intent was clear that there shall only be one flag lot, like meaning true flag lot, no shared drive behind uh, any other lot. So I think this becomes unnecessary, but what do you guys think? So I just want to make sure I'm clear on the way this is written here. And again, forgive me, but uh, if I have a subdivision, let's say easy math, I have nine, nine lots. Is this saying that I'm only allowed to have three interior lots or 12 interior lots? If your interior lots are like yours, flag lots with private drives, you could only have three. Three, okay. According to this. Single and then three more. Okay, very good. Okay. I don't know why we're limiting interior lots, but... Um, well yeah, I don't. I again, I I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. I don't understand a lot about the interior lot issue. I guess, um, but this doesn't right. If we're if we've already stipulated that share that act that lots along a shared driveway are not interior lots. Those lots don't weigh into the don't don't, factor don't count. The, yeah, correct. So this would only account for true flag lots, long skinny drive with a flag of a property sticking out behind a front, a quote unquote frontage lot. Yeah. So the question so posed by Dave Held is why limit? So that's a question, right? Let's call that not a rhetorical question. What is the purpose of limiting? Well, I think it's the purpose is it's like, let's just stick with my property, right? I got 10 acres. If I could, maybe I wanted to have five, I wanted to subdivide into five additional lots behind my house. You're taking away woods, you're taking away all kinds of things. I think limiting it to three probably makes a little bit of sense because it's like, or you're gonna have you're gonna have this driveway. You're gonna come down here, and I'm gonna have five to or as many like Dave Hell says, as many as I can get behind my house. I don't know. I I feel like there's having a limit to this is probably a good thing. I'll let Cindy weigh in on it too. I I, I feel like there should be some sort of limitation on this. Is it a land conservation issue? It may be. I wouldn't imagine why it's in there. Um, I guess that's my way in, <laughs> weighing in. I don't understand why it's in there. Well, I, I, th I think Joe's instinct is probably correct that it probably is a land conservation issue. But I think that's what we addressed in the zoning regulations by saying you could only have one flag lot. So in the situation you're describing, Brian, where you wanna subdivide your 10 acres, yeah. Nobody else could be flagged behind you with a private drive right now because you're already a flag lot. Yeah. So you could theoretically, and so and and I'm not saying this is good or bad, you could theoretically extend your drive to become a shared drive yeah, and there, have as many perfect. lots behind there as your yeah. lot size would allow. So I guess the question, and that would be on a shared drive. Those would be not interior lots. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so I guess the question is. Strike it. There are there are two questions. Well, no, there's two questions there. Um, can. No, never mind. Never mind. Okay, so I have a question. Yep. Where did the concept come from that even though it's a shared driveway, the lots are interior? 
where did that come from that they will not no longer be called interior lots? Yeah. It's a created convention for the regulations. And who created right? that convention for the regulations? Well, I had to come up with a solution to make it practicable but i mean but is, is this standard i guess that's what i'm saying is this standard in the industry of subdivisions what you're saying i can't i, I have no answer to that question i don't know yeah, so i would i would i would research that because i i can't imagine why they wouldn't be called interior lots yeah can, can we bring up a map that shows me like visually graphically what an interior lot is um well yeah sure uh let's look at your house <laughs> since yep. you already acknowledged that yours is one so get, let me pull up the parcel map uh oh. yeah i'm just confused now if i can if i can say my property is a, a flag lot which is what's your probably, what's your address bry 77 hagstrom road Sunset Strip. Name and address for the record, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there okay. used to be a show, man. So, oh, that's right, for your time. Yeah. Where did I go here? This one? You guys got that? Yes. Oh, look at that flag. Beautiful piece of property. Look at that. So, so, here, so here's your house, and here's the lot that you're flagged behind. Correct. This is what makes you an interior lot. You have a private driveway that leads here. And the way the, the, regulate, the zoning regulations now are currently constituted, uh, and we discuss them at great length, and it was what we as a group arrived on, was that nobody could then – whoops. That, and I don't know what this lot is now, but that nobody could – let's say there's nothing here. Nobody could then – come snake a longer drive back there and then build a house here sure. no no more than one flag lot shall be behind a frontage lot or however we set it mm -hmm. so in theory let's enlarge this a little bit in theory you could choose to subdivide come on scroll down so I don't know where your driveway is, but let's say it's here. It's right In here. theory, you could expand your driveway, thread it back here as a shared drive and put a lot here and put a lot here. But because I classify and as long as they're the as long as they're driveway. all on the shared drive, that would be permissible. So what makes them interior lots though? What's the what's the defining moment that because what makes not, it interior is, they don't is that it is Go ahead. Yeah, I think Cindy was saying, yes, that there's that there's not sufficient normal road frontage. Yeah. So that's why I don't so that makes it interior. So that's why I don't understand if you're doing shared driveways. And yeah, they're all like, interior. It seems like it would never be an interior lot if because everyone's gonna say it's a shared driveway or a private lot. They would never they would never they would never be classified as interior lot. Well, I think you need to do some research on that. I mean, if we haven't researched that in the industry, I mean, are we doing the right thing if this is not a common practice to not consider them interior lots? Let's Google that. Got a Google. Oh, good old Google interior lots so again all right you, brian's on it and we'll we'll move on to the next topic but so uh again the the regulatory bias against interior lots seems to be based in the fear of overdevelopment is that fair uh, yes i that think is so fair. So I so so for so then I understand um, I, I I do understand Cindy's point then as well about you know about how we're qualifying shared driveways, um, but I and then it does seem to me to make sense to keep a limit. I still don't understand why you would try to limit what the use of that lot is, 
but I do, it does make sense to me to limit the number of lots. So as I recall, uh, and I can't remember which of the engineers I was talking to about this, the theory is that by allowing the shared drives, you, dis or you, you reduce the incentive to just keep cutting new roadways in and creating new frontages, mm. right? So maybe, maybe that's a, a, a mild disincentive, but it would still be a disincentive. In, in other words, it allows you to do more with less. Mm -hmm. Cause every time you create a new road that has to have a new driveway, each of those roads, first of all, needs to be maintained by somebody, whether it's public or private. Of course, so does a shared drive, but you know, we'll get into the standards of construction later, um, but also creates more curb cuts, right? All of that creates more and wider impermeable surface. And potentially, as I understand it, and I won't say that I understand it perfectly, um, actually, incentivizes the idea of sprawling out into the surrounding land more than trying to keep it more compact with shared drives. So to your point, Joe, there could still be a good solid reason to limit the number of true interior lots. In other words, dedicated private drives that ke keeps snaking further and further and further back into a large parcel. That limitation does make some logical sense to me. Hmm. Yeah, I'm getting a little confused on this interior thing. I'll share my screen um, if I can. Uh, hold on. Yep. Hang on. You should be okay now. I just I just quickly looked this up. It's I don't I don't know where I'm Saratoga or whatever this is. They said interior lot means a lot other than a corner lot with only one frontage on a street other than an alley, see the lots marked in B. So all of these are Bs. But this is kind of like a private way, right? And it, here's your frontage. So this is these are all classified as interior lots. But we would say, that, well, this is a private way because it's a subdivision, right? I... So you could continue to build as many as you want because it's, well, it's a private way. It's, it's falling into a different classification. So it goes back to the same thing I keep on saying is I don't know when an interior lot is actually applied. Well, you do have the option, I suppose, uh, although we haven't really gotten to that line item of limiting the number of lots that can share a drive. Okay. I don't know if that solves the problem or not. I think it may, because I, in my opinion, I we're never going to have interior lots. They're going to be on private ways. They're going to have shared driveways. Uh, they'll be on public roads, right? It will never say, oh, yeah, you have to follow the definition of, well, that's an interior lot. It's never going to happen. So if we had other restrictions on those other three that I just mentioned, then it would probably make more sense. Is that your dog, Cindy? Uh, yes, it's my dog. I'm putting it on mute. She's not going to shut up. <laughs> That's OK. Hey, we uh, like Brian. puppies. Wait, we, what happened? I can't Let's put it. a pin in this section and move on to the next one. Let's see what else we come okay. up with as we move forward here. Maybe there's something else that- Brian, yeah. uh, uh, I just did what you did and I got, I got a definition of an interior lot. Uh, a lot bounded by a street only on one side. One side, yeah, it's just the street side. That's what you just had, Yeah. correct? 
you know. But then it, what is that street? Is it a private way? Is it a public public road? Is it a shared driveway? It's always going to fall under an, a different category, you know. But then I also think that maybe we've been thinking as a town about interior lots differently than the rest of the world. Yeah. Maybe. That is not at all the definition of an interior lot I had in my mind. Yeah, I would agree. Well, just what what is the definition of an interior lot that you had in your mind, Joseph? I, I mean, like, essentially, it was the same as a flag lot in my mind. Yeah, which I would agree with you, Joe, 100%. Because but it, it but seems using like every my lot... example, it's a shared driveway now. Now are you following what it, what it, you know, shared driveway is? Right, but because if we go, if we, if we think again about that, that image that Brian just showed us, where, you know, like those B lots had other lots on three sides of them and one road, that's an entire subdivision. That's, that's correct. all they are. Yep. So there's no way Good that we've point. been limiting subdivisions to a third of interior lots if of that's how yeah. we define an interior lot. Yeah, I would agree. You want to know the definition that we have now for interior lot? Go for it, Cindy. Let's hear it. Okay, a lot not containing the minimum road frontage generally required under these regulations, but conforming to all specific area and dimensional requirements for this type of lot. Minimum lot size shall contain 150% of land required for the underlying zone. Of course, no, we took that, that out. Yeah, I was gonna say that can't be right. <laughs> well, no, that, that's our definition now. Right. That's our definition now in our subdivision regulations. Oh, in the subdivision, I was going yeah. to say, not in the zoning regulation. Okay, no, all right. Now, division. now I'm not confused anymore. Yeah. Okay, so, so let me so go to the zoning regulations. So we, as we a town, there. have been defining them differently than the rest of the world. Wonderful. Why doesn't that surprise me? <laughs> We're trendsetters. Welcome to Tom's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't even. Let's see. Um, all right, in interior lot, flag lot, in our definition zoning. A land parcel that lies at the end of a long driveway, not containing the minimum road frontage generally required by these regulations, but otherwise conforming to all specific area and dimensional requirements for the district which is located. An interior lot may lie behind residence buildings or open land. Yeah. So that's so interior lot also in parentheses flag lot. Yeah, they are synonymous in our definition. So don't we have to make these definitions consistent we do yes yes okay all right my general point is going along with that definition that you just read and going with the last sentence that we we pasted up top there where it says for the purpose of these regulations lots along a shared driveway should not be considered interior lots again using my house as an example if i was going to subdivide it I would just call it a shared driveway. So now none of things, none of these things apply to me. Well, that's that's true. But the, the whole point was to give flexibility to property owners, right? Or yep. not the whole point. One of the motivations has been. Now, you as a commission have the right to say, we want to give developers a lot of flexibility, but not universal flexibility, and this is where we're going to limit it. Yeah. Um, All right. But as, cur as currently constituted, I believe that, uh, you know, unless we adjust some of these definitions and stipulations, lots on shared drives currently are considered interior lots, and we limit them to one, right? So this, this is trying to resolve that tension. Okay, well, we haven't got to what that means is shared driveways yet. So maybe it's coming, correct. Right? I, I'm just correct. looking for a single example of a interior lot unto itself that is not on a shared driveway, a private way, or a public road. So your house. Yeah, let's put let's put a pin in this one and move on. Yep. Okay. Uh, although I will point out it's eight thirty and we have street design and construction coming up. Oh, is that fun? Is that a long one? Well, it can be or it cannot be. I mean, it, it's actually pretty short here. Um, but standards for construction are currently in an appendix as opposed to here. I don't know. Maybe we can, we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 
yeah, we can always move stuff later. Well, I will say um, who wants to watch Handmaid's Tale, and I said I would tonight, so I got to We got to nine o'clock. It is nine o'clock. It is tonight. Not Jesus eleven. Santa's happy. Please. Yeah. No. No more four-hour meetings for for like another year. Five hour. <laughs> Holy. Christ. Yeah. Five hours. Five no. hours next. Better get a uh, Okay. It's thunder and lightning out there. Yeah, we might lose electricity. Well, you guys well, might that, lose electricity. Then, then no, that'll, that'll cut the meeting it. short regardless. Okay, letter D, uh, street design and construction. Streets shall be designed and constructed in accordance with the town of Thompson Road. road. Well, this is streets, so road ordinance and the following additional standards. Uh, one, classifications. All streets within or abutting the subdivision shall be classified as follows. A, local street, a street or road used primarily for access to abutting property. Streets in this classification shall be designed and constructed in accordance with the requirements of the road ordinance for local streets. B, collector street, a street or road which carries traffic from local streets to primary streets and arterial highways including the principal entrances to developments and streets for circulation within such developments. Streets in this classification shall be designed and constructed in accordance with the requirements of the road ordinance for collector streets. C, primary street, subcollector, a street or road used primarily for heavy volumes of traffic or high vehicle speeds or arterial highways. Streets in this classification shall be designed and constructed in accordance with the requirements of the road ordinance for collector streets. D, cul-de-sac, a road that shall have only one entrance from another town approved or state road or a road posted as no outlet, which may or may not include a turnaround. Well, first of all, that is factually incorrect. The outlet from the cul-de-sac road shall be the same as the entrance. A cul-de-sac road shall not have any other intersecting roads for the entire length of the road other than its entrance slash outlet. A cul-de-sac road is a dead-end road, which includes a turnaround at the end. So this contradicts this in the same paragraph. A cul-de-sac road cannot exceed 1,000 feet from its beginning, the center line of the intersecting street to the center of the turnaround. A cul-de-sac road shall not provide exclusive frontage to more than 12 proposed or existing building lots. The turnaround portion of a proposed cul-de-sac shall contain a teardrop-shaped island. Streets in this classification shall be designed and constructed in accordance with the requirements of the road ordinance for collector streets. Two, the commission reserves the right to require stricter road standards than those set forth when special or unusual project or site features make normal standards unworkable in whole or in part. And then three, we have a sentence fragment, criteria of Appendix B, road construction and drainage. Which isn't even so, the correct appendix. Yeah. So, so this is an unholy mess, which is one of the reasons I thought maybe we should just spend an extra half hour on the interior yeah. um, I'll say a couple things here. Uh, I did meet with Ru uh, with Russ with Rich uh, late last week to talk about some of the stuff in the road standards in the appendix and start talking about private roads, shared drives, all that kind of stuff. I do have some notes from that, um, but again, that stuff doesn't come up here so much. So I have well, let's read the marginal notes as well here, and then we'll we'll get into that. So. We picking up uh, 98. 98. Thank you. Uh, need, okay, need DPW director to weigh in on how to articulate standards for private roads, share drives within this section. Since we're going to permit them, we need to articulate the standards to which they must be constructed. Otherwise, all of the potential problems that have been identified, although it's more positive than identified, will be inevitable. 
Uh, and here we go. This seems like the appropriate place to introduce the idea that the town isn't particularly interested in accepting new roads without a demonstrated need for transit connectivity. Establish that the burden of such proof is on the developer and that cul-de-sac shall not be accepted by the town, private roads or drives only. I know that Dave Poplowski has very strong feelings about that, so I think we at least shouldn't discuss this until he can come make his case. Uh, these road categories do not conform to the categories described in Appendix A, since Appendix A is based on federal standards recommend aligning to that. Also, Rich and I discussed, and we agree, that private roads should substantively meet the standards for residential lanes as described in Appendix A. And you will note that residential lanes are not described here at all. Um, Clarify with DPW that these are the preferred standards for cul-de-sacs, even if the town will not be accepting them for maintenance. Dave held. Uh, limiting to 12 seems a little excessive. Presumably, the number of lots is going to be limited by the number of uh, square feet available anyway, right? Uh, and then out of place here at least needs clarification to what is being sure. said, which is a charitable way of saying this doesn't say anything. I remember I did look up uh, Appendix A and then the road ordinance when we were talking about Madison Avenue and, you know, what that cul-de-sac area should be constructed with. And it was a hot mess, right? The road, the road ordinance wasn't matching up the attachment A or Appendix A. Uh, so, yeah, this is definitely um, something that needs revamping, to say the least. Yeah, I'll tell you that what I'm inclined to do here, but it it would kind of take away the discussion until it comes up in a, a complete version one draft. So I'm not totally comfortable doing it. But my inclination would be to just, actually write out a new and clearer set of street design and construction requirements. But then if we go, uh, let me go up to the end. I oh, don't know. I'll do it this way. I'll scroll until I find, no, I won't do it. That'll take forever. Find the page. So, Somewhere else in here, it does start talking about, well, now let's go back down. The pain in the neck. Why couldn't people just write things well? Hmm. Yes. <sighs> so I guess, yeah, so I, I guess that is accurate. So you don't really see the standards again until not. you're in the appendix. And what is the point of the appendix? Yeah. if those are the standards, yeah. right? Uh, we don't want to keep you away for, from your hot date. <laughs> 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 I promise. We've got no more than 20 minutes, I promise. So I think we, we can talk in, gen, in general terms here. So uh, what I started to say, I guess, is what I will continue to say. What I'm inclined to do is just, uh, why do we need an appendix? to say what should be in the section on design. Why don't we just put the design criteria here under street design and construction? I'll take what I went over with Rich in the Appendix A and like the stuff from Killingly, although I think that was shared drives, not this stuff, and just drop it in here. So yeah, I just remember the, see that, it. that Appendix A had details of road construction uh, just be aware of that. At least that's what I remember when I looked it up. I could be mistaken. Uh, right. So that's what this is. Section D is street design and construction. So, just put so your, why, are we, why are we repeating it all over the place? That's fine. And, and that's just to fulfill, you know, one of our stated goals. And, and, you know, I don't have to do it one way or the other, but it just seems to me if one of our stated goals is to make it easier 
for somebody coming in, picking up these regulations to go, this is my process in the order in which it occurs. What's the point of alluding to the standards and then putting the standards somewhere else? I, yeah, I, I would agree. As long as that that uh, attachment A or appendix A isn't riddled in details and it's going to be pages and pages and pages. Well, I'll, we can look at I'll it because totally it is here. Putting, totally fine putting it into the body of the. It is. It is multiple pages. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, remember. it's. Yeah, it would be it it would be a very robust section. Whereas now it's a thumbnail that tells you to go to look for the real information somewhere else. Uh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pages. Yeah. Ten pages. So, so let's think this through from the point of view of uh, of a developer. And and Brian, you may have the best, uh, the the most relevant experience here. If you're picking this, and I know you do schools, not subdivisions, but if yeah, but you're picking up a book happen all of the regulations. Time. This happens all the time. Appendixes are not unusual, right, for me. It, it would just point me and say, yep, go to Appendix A, and I'd have to go here. So I, 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 I wouldn't care that it's in the body. I think, putting, I think putting 10 pages of information, if this is all accurate, in the body of your specification, which that's what I would call it, would be a yeah. little unusual. You said it would be a little what? Unusual to have it there. Unusual. Yeah. I would just keep it as an appendix, especially okay. this graded detail, which this is what I remember at the end. It was quite lengthy. Okay. So if that's the case, let's go back to the section. What was that page? Like we didn't, what are we, two pages into where we started? Yeah. I think 27, <laughs> something like that for you, I think. Yeah. I wanted to do eight. I just want to. Say that out, out loud again. I wanted to do eight pages tonight. <laughs> but Brian's got a date. <laughs> hey, the other night she's cool. texting me. She's like, are you guys going to midnight on this one? I'm like, I'm I'm totally lost right now. <laughs> okay. So so here's where we here's where we are. And Brian just said it's probably more useful to have those things as an appendix. What is the purpose of all this? What is the purpose of having anything other than streets shall be designed and constructed in accordance with the town of Thompson Road Ordinance and appendix and the standards described in Appendix A? Yeah, I would agree with that. No. <laughs> yeah, everybody good with that? Yes. I mean, that, that's, yeah. we could just have one standard and that's it. And uh, roll with that. Yeah, because I'll tell you what else happens. Having it repeated gives you a, the opportunity to contradict yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Say it once and say thinking. what you mean. Yeah, I, I, I'm just trying to think, <laughs> thinking about like our collector's theory, what were they were trying to think there. It, it seems like it's all the same stuff. And Cindy, uh, confirm for me, if we keep it as an appendix, then as federal standards change, which, though, which that's based on, we can change the appendix without going through the rigmarole of yep. amending yes. the body of the regulations with public yeah, that, hearing. Is that yes. exactly, correct? That's exactly yes. the that's reason true. why it remains an appendix, because those yes. things do That's change. exactly why. All right. Boom. <laughs> um. And I get to punt on cul-de-sacs again. What is criteria of appendix B? What is that though? I don't even nothing. know. It's a, it's a this hot is mess. It's a hot mess. All right, strike that hot mess. Criteria, <laughs> appendix B is lights or something. Lighting. Okay. Screen. Oh, look at that. By the uh, way, I get your right. answer for shared driveways. <laughs> Somebody's working on it in the background. I love it. No, that's fine. Uh, remind us which, which question you're answering though. I'm not answering any question on this section. I, I was doing some research on comps, shared driveways. Right. Like, so you said right. you had the answer, but but which which answer is it? Okay. So common driveways. This is the killing regs that you sent us. Common okay. Yep. 
common driveways, which we was, we're calling shared, serving more than one dwelling unit are encouraged, especially when interior rear lots are proposed in cul-de-sacs. And common driveways may serve up to five dwelling units and shall be paved, et cetera. So, so they are calling them interior lots. I just thought I'd let you know that, killingly. Yeah, I like those killingly. I don't know if anybody else had a chance to read those. I thought those were super well laid out. And I know we don't know the, this answer. <laughs> <laughs> We've got 14 minutes to consider it, though. No, I know we, but like, how does killingly describe, in, is killingly defining interior lots the same way we are, which is essentially synonymous with flag lots? Well, we'd have to look at the rest of the Right, that's what lots. I'm saying. Yeah. Right. That's, that's the question, yeah. Yeah. Let's look at the rest of the interior lot section. Okay, yeah, yep. Um, but yeah, for whatever it's worth, just on the on the simple topic of private and versus common driveways, uh, private and common driveways, um, I thought those were super well written, and I am highly inclined to plagiarize them and adapt them. I agree. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um. Well, street planning, Alvin suggests making street planning a separate numbered section, compare our requirements to the language used by Woodstock. I'm gonna just keep that as an action item for myself. I think we can cut out 13 minutes early so that Brian has a chance to microwave some popcorn. What do you guys think? <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay, so we will pick this up. Uh, for e, uh, uh, Article 4, Section 3E, Street Planning, I will set the three special meeting dates by the end of the week. I'd like to do it by tomorrow, just in case it comes back with uh, a majority for um, the first, which I don't think it will, but... Um, just in case. So I'll send them out either late in the afternoon tomorrow or at the very latest Friday, all three dates. We can decide which ones are for subdivisions and which one will be regs review. I don't know. We can just toss a coin. I don't, I don't actually care much which one. It may be depending on who's available for which dates and who prefers. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good work, guys. <laughs> As long as you get your five or six people on, that's all you care about. Cindy, I'm Yeah, just... I mean, you know, the four of you plus Dave Poplowski have been at virtually every one and have done the bulk of this work. So I'd like to have the five of you every single time, um, if possible. And then uh, obviously anybody else can come in, right? But I, I consider that group of five to be the true su subcommittee in this case, so. Yep. yep. Cindy, the people last night that were trying to do the accessory building, are they really going to go to ZBA or are they going to wait for us to try to expedite the updates? Um, I, I got the application today, but I didn't take their money. And yeah. we're going to do, accept the application on June 7th because we're a week early, the ZBA meeting, because my vacation. Yeah. And so the public hearing would be in July. So yeah. I told them whatever comes first. Yeah, and if they have to go for a public hearing at ZBA, then they got to pay the three hundred thirty-five dollars. Yeah, that's what I was trying to avoid from them yeah. if we could get our stuff together. But okay, yeah, all right. I mean, it's it's off topic for the. No, I'll just stop the recording. It's off. Wait, can topic I just get a, can the, I get a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hold on. Motion made by Mr. Lanky. Second. Boom. By Mr. Santos. The meeting is adjourned at eight forty-nine p.m. Okay, so 